Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at moving from Google Workspace into Microsoft 365. We're going to be using the BitTitan Migration Wiz tool to do the, the list and shift for this one. Uh, so following on from the, the previous demos we've had with setting up the M365, creating the tenant and all that, um, you'll know that um, we've got an existing user in here, which is Carl. We've been using him for testing, but we've got, if I shoot over to the Google Workspace side, you can see this one, it, look, it's quite a small tenant. And the, the main thing with this demonstration is that we're just showing the process of how things move over rather than trying to do it, you know, a thousand, two thousand people because it's going to be the same thing. So really what we want to concentrate on here is bringing across these other accounts, which is Ellie, Kevin and Russell into the M365 tenant away from Google. So currently the MX records and the like are pointing into Google. It is a live um, production domain, which I'll show you here. If we look at Russell's account on Gmail, you can see he's got lots of um, email, which I signed him up for just as a, as a test. So he's got, we've got something to migrate, but you can see here sending an email in, listening to Russell, away it goes in there. So obviously in the 365 side, if I just drop that down, you can see that we don't have our user set up. So really we're starting from scratch for these particular people. Now, a migration tool is not going to create the identities for you in 365. Um, it's just going to do the lift and shift of moving the data over. So the first step is to get these identities from the Google side into 365. So I'm going to show you how, how I do it. Um, obviously there's different ways of creating them, but um, this is based on the fact that we don't have a local domain set up. This is a cloud only scenario. Uh, so we don't have uh, a local AD, which is set up you know, with the AAD Connect producing the identities in the cloud. This is purely a cloud only scenario that we're working with. So to create those identities in 365, we're going to do that through PowerShell. You could quite easily just go and add users and put them in for these three people. But if, you, if you're dealing with a lot of people, you don't want to be doing that, obviously. So if we go to our user list inside the Google environment, we can hit download users. And what that'll do is it'll take our columns that we have. We want it down to a CSV and we can download it into a spreadsheet, which will be much easier to, uh, to manage and get these into PowerShell. So once that download is ready for us, we just hit download CSV. I'm going to put them, uh, I'm going to put it in downloads for now, but I'll move it across um, afterwards. We're going to edit that file and we're going to use that as our, uh, like our migration run sheet, if you like. When that spreadsheet first comes up, you will notice it's a standard CSV. I like to just save it as a proper Excel sheet and call it migration run sheet. Now I'll do a quick bit of tidy up on that. Now, obviously this has only got five people in it and you would probably have a few thousand or a few hundred, whatever your migration is. So we need an easy way where we can take this information and, and use it for the, the migration effort. So the first thing we want to do here is I'm going to put a command in here, which will uh, is a PowerShell command, and it gets built from the criteria that we've got inside this spreadsheet to give us the uh, commands to create the users. Now I get that from this one here, and if I just cut and paste that in into this cell, notice as I go across slightly, what it's done is it's taken that information and it's really just created this nicely formed PowerShell line. Um, obviously display name, a, a lot of these are just quite um, easy what they would represent. The interesting one possibly is the license assignment and you can see here this is for the uh, licenses we have in our tenant. If we want to go and grab that information uh, we just do a get msol account SKU out of PowerShell. Let me just show you that very quickly. Just bring up the PowerShell window, we'll connect into the msol service which we do as the admin user. Password and a quick MFA check. And we're in there. Now the command that we're after with this one is really just get msol account SKU and you'll get that information. And that's, that is the block there that we then copy into that, uh, that line. So that's pretty simple. So with this one in, quite easy then, we just copy that down to the others and we've got all the commands. Now we don't want all of these people 
to be migrated. We're not going to do Carl. We're certainly not going to do that admin user. So what generally I would put in here is, is and we'll probably put it at the start. We'll put a batch in. So, and uh, we call it batch. Let's call it uh, Tuesday. Actually, we're not doing Carl. We're doing um, Tuesday. That, and you might have um, uh, one here. Do not migrate. Now you'd have that obviously for a lot of people in there. But the nice thing with that is, is that I can now go into the filter and filter out everybody. And I say, I only want to deal with the people in Tuesday. And there's my accounts that I need for that. And then I can just grab these lines here, copy those. And that's why I already connected in here. Drop those in there and just play that. And away we go. Now, I think I saw in a previous video, you'll know that I haven't specified a password for these people. We can put a password line. You could put on the end of this one. We could say password and then whatever you want. That will set that up as that password. Otherwise, it just creates one down here and you can use that one. I suggest you might want to change that um, for the users, but it does set that default password. This is a nice easy way of setting them all to a standard one if you want to do that at the start. Whatever your business process is around that, you just uh, go ahead and do that. But essentially what's happening here is that if I just drop these away and this one, go back to the active users here and hit a refresh, you should see some accounts in here. And look at that, very, very quick and easy. So you could quite easily, if you've got a cloud scenario and you don't have your local ID, like I said before, you could very easily go and create four or 500 users via the scripting off the spreadsheet in that fashion and it's a very quick and easy thing to do but essentially now these people are ready to have data migrated into them but now what we'll do is we'll go over into the bit title migration with product and we will uh, have a look about how we might go about taking this data from these google workspace gmail accounts and getting it into uh, 365. when we first look at the migration with screen you're presented with this I'm just going to hit the start migrating now so we can set up projects. Now, the way things are done in here is it's all done based on, on projects, and a project is essentially a batch of people. So what we have is a, a work group down the side, and that's where all our projects then get listed, and all based on the different customers. You can have multiple customers in there. So I know that sounds a lot of information just to take it in one go, but I think you'll, you'll see it a lot clearer as I start to create this, this account for this Planium migration. So what we do is we just hit Create Project. And you can see there's lots of different types of projects we can do, uh, you know, the hybrid exchange or the mailbox collaboration, which is the Teams migrations. But we're going to use the mailbox project here because it is a, a Google G Suite or Google Workspace into Microsoft 365. So we put in here the project name and the customer. So we'll set up a new customer. And we'll put in here that is the alien.com. So, and select our country, US. We can leave all these others as optional and hit save on that. Now, when we do our next step, it's going to start talking about source and target. Now, the source is obviously where the data is coming from, but that's where you get to set up what type of project it really is. So, if we say we want a new endpoint because they're considered to be endpoints, we can say, that's going to be the uh, Planium Google Workspace. But we need to then specify the Gmail API, where it's coming from, and it's going to ask us for this JSON file. Now, we haven't done that setup yet, so we're going to get to a point here where we can't go any further until we select that file and put that in. So we do need some assistance from that. I'd suggest we go and look at the help articles to say, OK, what do we need to set up inside the Google Workspace to allow the migration with product to connect in, grab all the information out and what account is it using, all of that. So let, let's go ahead and do that. We'll leave this one open like this, but we'll um, we'll jump into the uh, the Google side. So to get that information, we're gonna look at the help center inside migration with. So we'll just have that open on a different tab in here. We go and say visit help center. And in here, it's going to tell us everything we need to know about the setup for this migration. So we're going to go into this perform a migration and have a look at these different sections. We're looking for the Google Workspace, which will be this guy here. And then the Gmail API. 
going into Exchange Online, which is this one. And this really gives us everything step by step on what we need to do to get this running. And you can see one of the first things that we need to do is prepare the source, which is this Google Cloud Platform, in which case we'll go into that, we'll enable the APIs for the service account and uh, create that uh, uh, customer service, sorry, customer tenant service account, get that done and set up the scopes so it can um, have the permissions to do what it needs to do. So you can see everything is laid out in here. We're just going to follow this, but I'm going to do it right now and show you um, how that is to be done. So we're going to open up the, uh, the Google Cloud Platform. I'm going to pop that into here and log in accordingly. Now that's using the link off of that help center. So this is what takes us straight in to this. Now you'll notice that we have a previously uh, created project uh, from a, another migration we've done. So we're not going to ignore that one, but uh, we're going to set up a new one. In here. So we go into the project items here and we'll say new project and give it a name. So we'll call this one just migration with, we've got the organization right, the location is correct. So we just go ahead and hit create on that. And uh, that'll go off in the background and create that project for us. And once that's done, we get notified accordingly. We say select project and that will change the scope of obviously the screen and everything we're seeing into this project. So what we're essentially doing here is we're adding in the APIs that we want this project to be able to connect to. So we do that by going into the library. And in here, we've got a huge library of all the different APIs that we can use, but there's some specific ones we're after. And it's a lot easier if we just type them in. But it's really, the, firstly, the one we, we need here is the calendar API. So really just do a search for it and grab it and enable it. And that enables it inside that project for you. So. Once that's done, it all happens very quickly. But once that's done, we'll pop back up into here and then we can just run back into the library again. And we just add some more. So we need the, the main Gmail API. Yeah, bring that in, enable that. We need three more after that. So in here, library, we need the people. API, this one, enable that too. I'm not pausing anything as I'm doing it. This is all real time so you can see exactly what it looks like when we add these in. But we also need the contacts. This one here, contacts API, enable that. And one last one too. which is going to be the admin SDK, which is this one here. Enable that one as well. So once we've got the API set up, we say, okay, these are the APIs that this project is going to uh, connect to. The second part is to create an account that has access to that project. We do that in a slightly different area. So we're gonna go up to the top here, and we go to the uh, IAM and admin, and we're going into the service accounts, which is in here. We're going to create a new service account in here. Like that we'll call it. We'll call this one migration with admin, and create and continue. We'll select a role for it. It's going to be the owner. And we just hit continue on that. And then we just hit done. We don't need to do anything else in there. And you can see that's created that service account for us. Now we get to create the key, which is that JSON file that we're going to be downloading. So on this account, we need to create, sorry, go to the manage keys. And we're going to say add a key and create a new one. And you can see there, JSON, that's good. Create that, and that will save it onto the machine. Now that is the important file we need to put into the project setup that we were talking about previously. Now the last step in here is to just move this bar across to the right slightly. We need to copy out this client ID. So we're gonna grab that, copy it to clipboard. I'm gonna use that file we had earlier, just a bit of a 
scratch pad there, drop that in there. We'll need that in a little bit later on. But once we're done with that, we can now go back to the admin console. We need to give the, the APIs some rights inside the admin center. Now we need to jump back into here, the admin center. We need to give that API some rights inside the Google Workspace environment. So we do that under the security tab here. And you can see under access and data controls, we've got API controls. What we're looking for in here is the domain wide delegation. So under this, we hit add new and it's asking us what the client ID is. If you remember from previously, that's what we need. And that just binds everything together. So we'll paste that in. Now, the OAuth scopes in that comma delimited format, we get those from that help center article. So I'm just going to go in here and grab that, copy and paste. Now, Looks like there's only one, but if you go back, you'll see it's actually all of them. Go back quite a long way. And we hit authorize on that. And that will add them in. As you can see there, it's added in plus nine more. You can see to the migration with admin user account there. So after that, uh, we can just view what we've done. But that is essentially all we need to do for the security side of the setup. We jump back into this endpoint creation. Creation now we've got a JSON file we can actually do something with. So I say select file. I put it in here. And that and the admin. We will use the admin at admin.com. Read everything in. As you can see, it's it's happy with that. And we'll carry on to our next step, which is the destination side. So this is where we put the details around the tenant, the Office 365 tenant. So we just hit new once again, and we'll call this one JDM M365, and that will be Microsoft 365, and we'll give it the admin username and the credentials, obviously, like so. And there we go. And after that, and that's accepted those, so we will carry on and go to our summary page. It will save the project and pretty much we're ready to go. Saving it in there, and it will take us across to the main screen. There we go. So, what we have on the left hand side here, you can see the projects that are set up, which are in the type of project, so you can see G Suite 365. And uh, currently, there's no items in the project. Uh, obviously, we haven't added any users in there yet. So this is where we, we start to think about what users we want to bring into this migration project. So to add the users in, we could do it on the quick add, which is really adding a source and a destination. Um, yeah, great if you've got a couple of users, but not if you've got uh, hundreds or thousands of them. So we're going to use this bulk add which really takes a CSV file and drops it in here for us. And uh, to do that, the best way is to really go back to our spreadsheet, which we had about what, uh, what batches and things we're going to be doing. And what we need to specify in here is a source address and a destination address. The rest of the data can stay, that's totally fine. Um, so what I'm gonna do is add in another column here and label it. So we'll call this one destination, you might want to call this one source. Now in this migration, it's actually quite simple because they're going to be the same. It's going across, but this way you could map different things. If Russell wanted his last name in there, uh, then you, you'd make those changes accordingly for the source and destination. Now, what we need to do though, is we need to download that CSV file, which is this one here, download the sample, and that will look like this. If I bring that up for you. There we go. Now, you can see what it's expecting in the file to do the import is a source email. And if there's a login and password for, the, for those, and obviously for the destination as well, you can put those in. These are the two columns we need to populate. So really all, all we're gonna be doing with that is taking the source from here and paste it there. Likewise on this side here, take that, paste it there. So that really does create the, just tidy that up for you, the import file for migration. Now, 
over the years when I've been doing these projects, um, I have a whole ton of macros in the background that I would take that migration sheet and have buttons I could press to do exports of different batches and all things like that. This is obviously not the scope for this video, but there's plenty you can do to automate all of this sort of spreadsheet work when you're working with these, these import files and like. Or, I mean, you could even do it off a, off a base SQL database as well. The key thing is you're batching up your users accordingly and creating a CSV file that you can bring into each project or each batch in the Migration Wiz console. How you do it, entirely up to you, but as long as you end up with a valid CSV file, then you are clearly good to go. So we'll save this one and drop that one away. And we will do the select file here. And you can see there's our file. So and bring that in. Now with this batching here, you can go in and change them. If there's anything slightly wrong with any names, feel free to edit this. Um, clearly three users is a very small amount, but you might have a lot in there. You can go through and check and make sure they're mapped accordingly. But as soon as you've done that though, just hit the save. And that will save them and bring them into the Migration Wiz project. Pretty quick, and there we are already. Let's then talk about some of these different migration events that we're going to be doing here, because you can see here from the console, we're ready to go with this migration. That's fine. Um, but you see here, user migration bundle active as no. Now that depends on the licenses that you've purchased to do your migration. You've either in migration with you've either got the standard uh, migration with uh, mail license, which will mean that it is uh, just doing the mail, and that is completely separate to the user migration bundle, which includes all the deployment pro and the other functions that you're migrating as well. Now, if I were to try and kick off, this isn't a good example. If I try and kick off this migration, as you can see, let's say I, I go straight to a full migration. You'll see that it will start to work, but it's talking about the license here. My license is a mismatch because I purchased the user migration bundle. I, it's not going to let me run a single migration on here because that's a different license code. So what we do with that is we will tag them all and we'll do the apply licenses. I apply the user migration bundle. This, as you can see here, we go in and it's saying three. It's good. We apply those and they'll show up as being a yes. Now that activates the, these accounts so they can be used in things like deployment pro and the like. Um, but when that comes up with a yes, then you'll see it'll allow us to do these migration work. So that's a um, uh, little trick before you get started with these migrations. But while that's coming through, I wanna talk about these other things that are happening. So I want to start here. If I tick one person, I have the start. You can see here, we've got these items. Now we would run through these and you can say assessment is going to be looking at what is there in the source. Um, but the one I'm interested in here is verify credentials. This will make sure that the credentials that we've put in with our, our JSON key, our service account and the, the M365, everything is good to go. Now, because we're doing it at a tenant level, not at a user ah. level, this will then be relevant ah. for everybody that we've migrated. And our trial migration does like a dummy run. It doesn't migrate anything. It just attempts to, to say, is this going to work for us? Which is you know, a good thing to do when we first get started. Um, but these two here is what I want to talk about. Tree stage and full migration. Tree stage is what we do when we are uh, getting the mailbox up to the point where we can say, we want to migrate everything apart from the last 30 days. If these mailboxes are quite large, we want to make sure that um, when we do our cutover on a say, Friday night or Sunday afternoon, whatever we choose to do, if you just run a full migration at that point, we have no idea of really how long that's going to take. The idea behind a pre-stage is making that initial copy right up as, as far up to date as we possibly can to make the full migration very, very quick. So the full migration is like the uh, uh, just the, the, the tail end of the migration, making sure that everything's brought over. So what we do with our pre-stage is we make sure that um, we, we set the dates and things accordingly, and then it makes the full migration at the end very, very quick and easy. So remembering that a pre-stage migration uh, does nothing in terms of affecting the user and the ability to run. Everything on this migration is still pointed at Google Workspace. The MX records are still pointing there. They're getting mail coming in there continuously. So the pre-stage is what we do way ahead of time. 
and, and make sure that's all good and good to go so we can do our full migration tasks afterwards. So for this one, the first thing we're going to do is to verify credentials. And we'll say, yep, we'll do that. And that will go away. And uh, we see in the submitted stage and making sure everything's done. As you can see in the background, that user migration bundle has, has taken effect. So that's all good to go as well. But we really make sure that the, the credentials are good. So we'll just let that run through and come back in a second. So after a refresh, you can see that our verification has failed. Now, this I wanted to show you because, uh, like I say, my videos are always going to be real world. Remember when we did our source setup, we did all the, uh, the Google side. We did nothing on the Office 365 side. There's nothing done there. So when we look at this error that we're getting, it's going to say migration failed when checking destination credentials, auto discover. And you think, well, you know, what does that really mean? Um, what it really means is the fact that we're trying to authenticate with that admin account to do the migration. But that admin account has got MFA on it, uh, which is obviously not good. And also basic auth is deprecated in this tenant. We have to use modern auth instead. So we've got quite a bit to do to make sure this, this tenant can accept data from a third party like MigrationWiz. So there's some articles about exactly what you need to do. And let's just jump over to those in the Help Center now. So in that Preparing Destination article, we can see the impersonation and delegation that needs to be set up with the admin account we're going to be using. Now, what I'm going to do is something slightly different here as well. I'm going to be creating a migration account inside um, Microsoft 365 just for the purpose of migration. And then we can use that and we just remove it at the end. So let's go across and create that account now. Um, in fact, I won't bore you with that. I'll just do it and come back. So there we go. As if by magic, we have a MigWiz at Planium.com, which I've also given global admin to. Now we need to go back into the PowerShell in here, and uh, we need to do a little bit of work in here. Now, all we're doing in here is just run one command, which is enable organization customization. Now, if it comes back with an error, it means that it's already been done. As you can see, yes, it has already been enabled for this. Um, it's just something we need to do in the back end so that the uh, impersonation of that account can work. Now you can see in the help here, it's saying that we don't need to do anything uh, past that with management role assignments and the like, it will do that itself. Uh, but we do need to, here in the 365 as a destination, we need to go into the advanced options and set that up. So let's just go back in and do that in here. And we'll go back up to the edit project into the advanced options and we will put that in. And that is kept under the source and destination tab. And you can see there, yeah, look, it's already ticked using impersonation to authenticate. So that is all well and good. Now, if we jump back into there, you can see really what it's talking about with what it needs to do around that. And you can see all the different uh, processes that need to run. So the next stage with this is to make sure that we have the, uh, the 2FA uh, disabled for that account. Uh, it does require that you can see here 2FA is not supported at this time. We do need to set that up so that it's excluded. So let's just jump back into the uh, the Azure because we already have those policies set up that enforces it on every single user. So we do need to exclude that MigWiz. And that's why we like that MigWiz account because it means we can exclude it from those, those policies quite easily. So let's do that. We'll go into the uh, Azure side here and into Azure Active Directory. And what I'm after here is where those uh, settings are for the uh, conditional access. So we go into security and under conditional access. You can see these are the policies that we were talking about uh, previously. So what I'm gonna do is require MFA for admins. It is turned on and I want to go into the uh, users here and I want to go into the exclusions and pick out a particular user, which is going to be a service account. Uh, and nope, we have that set up, we're good. And I will turn it off, we've got the all users one as well. Just gonna make sure that uh, that one is excluded there as well. So the E5 demo one is, I'm gonna add in C5 
service account as well. Done. So that. Okay, so that'll take a, uh, a few minutes to take effect, but that is essentially done there. So let's jump back to the migration wizard now. Because I also do need to go back into the project itself. Hit that project. And you can see from the destination settings, you see we've still got this user in here. I want to change that. Hit that endpoint, and we're going to be putting in the MigWiz account. The, um, the password, obviously. Like that. Neat for that. And that is done. Obviously, it's a safe project. It'll just jump back into here. Now, we don't want it to use the basic auth. We wanted to use modern auth for this migration work. So let's go into the auth again, because it does talk quite nicely about what this is. Now, this is exactly the error that we got when we did the, uh, the testing of the credentials. So what it's saying here is that we do need to have the account excluded from MFA and conditional access policies, which we've done. And we want to go into the using it with modern auth because we can't turn off uh, base, sorry, we can't turn on basic author. It's turned off now permanently. So we need to follow these instructions to add the modern auth and put it in as basically as an app registration and get those into the tenant as well. So we go back to our Azure AD dashboard there. What I'm interested in AD, I'm looking for the app registrations, which is right here. And we're going to start a new registration. And we'll give it a name. Operation with app. Now for this, we uh, just say accounts in the organization directory only. Uh, but we do need to put in a public client here. I'm going to copy that from those instructions that it's giving us on the uh, on the help article, which is that one there. Uh, as you can see, if I just jump back to that very quickly, you'll see that's really what I'm doing here. And once we've done that, we'll then hit register. There it goes. Now that's not quite the end of it. We've got to go back to those into this app registration. Now, what we need to find is the client ID and the tenant ID. So we're going to grab those out. So let's grab the whole thing there. Now, the reason I'm not doing it from the copy to clipboard, I'm grabbing the whole thing, and you'll see is that I want to have them. So I know what this relates to. I'll grab that one, and I want this one here as well. Um, drop it in there. There we go. So that's good. So our next stage, we want to go to the authentication tab here, and go right down the bottom, and we want to be turning on public flows and saving that. Now we're going to add some API permissions in. So. API permissions, these are the standard ones, and uh, we're going to go to add a permission, and we're going to find apps by organization users, and have a look for the Office 365 Exchange Online, there it is, and we are going to be uh, selecting that with delegated permissions, and we're going to go and find EWS, there it is there. Um, and turn that one on. And hit the add permissions. Then we need to grant the admin consent and say, yep. And that will change these to a yes there. Oh, sorry. Um, hit the tick box there for the yes. And uh, really, that's pretty much it in there. So we can go back into the dashboard and have a look. The different app registrations that we see, and you'll see there's our migration wiz app. Okay, so now we jump back into the migration wiz console, and we want to be going up to the edit project, advanced options again, and we're going to add some in. So we just go to any of these and hit a plus, and we get the extra one there. And what we want to put in there, because we're doing it at a destination level, we are going to put these two in here. Again, cut and pasting out of the uh, the help article. But here we've got modern auth client ID import. Now remember, I, I saved those, didn't I, in here. So there's our client ID. Grab that, copy that out, paste it in there. 
and the tenant ID, which is this one here. Copy that into there, like so, and save that accordingly. So that should give us everything we need. So let's go in now, hit the tick here, hit start, and we'll do a verify credentials, and we'll see if everything is tied together nicely now. Now, after just waiting a few minutes for that to check out, there we are, completed and verification is now done. So it looks like we're, we are set up ready to uh, get migrating. So what we do first is I'm going to kick off just Russell. Uh, and this is part of the, uh, the, the nicety around having these sort of tools. I, I know that can be the setup we've just done may appear to be a little bit, um, a little bit extra. But to be honest, it is actually quite easy to get done and you get into a bit of a flow with it and you can get it done pretty quickly. And of course, once you set it up on the tenant, um, you can use that, uh, you know, th those tenant IDs and things in all the different batches. And so it's just a one off thing you've got to do. But what you get in terms of the benefits here is let me just show you what you can do with these two items here. Because what you've got in the project is the advanced options. Now we touched on this very briefly before you saw these screens, but really th there's a lot to it. There's a lot you can do in these here. And one of them is filtering. We can see in the whole migration, we just want to migrate things that are newer than a certain date. You might have a huge amount of data and say, look guys, we're only bringing over the last two years worth of email. Then obviously we do this, set it at the project level. And, um, you know, and then, then it's good for every single migration on that particular project. And you can also say items older than a specific date. Uh, so if you want to go the other way, you can certainly do that as well. Um, by folder, we can do things like it says here, exclude deleted items, have certain folders in script, do other matching items here. Now the regex is kind of complex. Um, you want to be doing this and actually running some tests when you do these type of things. Um, but you can certainly do this some of the, uh, the easier ones here is it's yeah, these deleted items. We don't want to migrate deleted items, so we'll actually just uh, pump that in there. Oops, I did it uh, not quite correct, but I know what it is. It's uh, it was just that. So it's pretty pretty easy to do. Um, so that's all good. I will just jump back into that advanced options and have a look at uh, source and destination. Now this is an interesting one because the way Gmail works, obviously we have labels instead of folders like we do with uh, you know, the, the Office 365 site. So what it will do is it will convert the labels to folders. And you can, if you've got quite a large set of mail to bring over and somebody is very, very good at putting lots of labels, it's going to create those emails in all of those folders as well. So you could end up with a 50 gig mailbox suddenly becoming an 80 gig mailbox when you migrate it across to 365. So it's worth um, keeping an eye on that and making sure that, uh, that those folder sizes don't blow out. What you can do is you can convert labels to categories instead, uh, and that will uh, obviously put them all in the inbox, and of course then you get the categories assigned. So there's two ways to handle that type of thing. And also we can tell it to skip suggested contacts, or we can migrate them um, up to you there. And also we can say migrate the data into, say, an archive. You might want to just say, hey, we're starting off with a brand new 365 mailbox, it's good, but your archive is going to have all your old Gmail in it, and that's an option to do that as well. So uh, that's obviously good. And uh, the other things about how many licensing, how many licenses to consume, because um, you migrate up to 50 gig per license that you purchase with migration with. So if a, if a mailbox was 80 gig in size, you're going to allow it to consume more than one license to get that done. So we'll just save on those and come back to our main screen. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to kick off Russell for migration. We're going to do a pre-stage with Russell. So we'll just uh, kick it off for pre-stage. And you can see here, it's using the licenses correctly because of that user bundle we've done here. And we're just gonna create the, sorry, migrate the mail. Now in a pre-stage environment, you don't pre-stage calendar, contacts, tasks, and all of that. There's really no point. They're pretty small in terms of data size. Now push when you do a full migration, no problem at all. So our pre-migration is just going to be mail. And you can see here, we want to bring things from 30 days ago or a specific time. Now, in this particular case, they're quite new. So if I said anything older than 30 days, it's not going to do anything. The mailboxes in Gmail are under that. Um, so I'm going to put a specific time, and I'm going to say anything going from uh, December 5th. And we'll put in 2022, and we'll put 
zero, zero is there. And we'll do that. We can also schedule it to start at a certain time as well uh, to say, when do we want to kick this off? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say start migration and get that underway. Now, as that starts for Russell, I do want to uh, jump into the Office 365 mailbox for him. As you can see here, and if I logged on as Russell, you can see it is empty. Now, when I'm doing the first tests on these migrations, I like to have one of them open. We probably have a test mailbox that we can migrate first. But what I want to see is I want to see mail appearing. That's the, uh, like I sometimes say, proof of the pudding is I want to see mail in there. So let's uh, await that coming in and uh, keep an eye on that migration screen in here for the progress. Now I also like to just hit refresh. You can say it's submitted. That's submitted into the back end of migration ways. It's going to go off and get in the queue and actually get processed for us. So once that starts to move, you'll see the progress bar. It'll go from submitted into a queued state, and then you get the processing and you'll get the bar, and you can really see what the, uh, the data movement is like. So just keeping an eye on the status, so you can see now it's gone to a queued state, which is looking good. All right, so let's look at how this is doing. Let's have a quick refresh. And you can see, yep, that's chugging along nicely. How much is it migrated? I know his mailbox isn't particularly big, but you can see it does have data movement in there, which is good. And if we click on the user, we can see really what's going on. So this is, this is another benefit of these migration tools is that I can see what it's done exactly where it's up to um, in any of these folders and basically the whole mailbox. And uh, yeah, I see it's all ticking over quite nicely. So let's have a look at his mailbox and see what it looks like so far. So obviously it hasn't quite finished, but you can see that it does have mail in there, which is uh, really good to see. So I don't think that want to be particularly long to migrate. Now, if we have a look at his Gmail, you'll see that he's got mail from December 2nd and then a few from today. And the stuff from today is not there. Now, that's obviously because we're doing the pre stage. We told it to have that cutoff date, and that's what the, the pre stage is meant to do get everything ready for us in there. So, back to our main screen here, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to take Kevin and Ellie, and I'm going to kick those off as well to a pre stage. And all well and good. We'll do that from a specific time. We'll do that from the same same timing. Oops, excuse me. December five twenty two should be the zero and zero. And we get that in there. We can hit the start migration, and you can see they're submitted as well. So. Uh, we'll let that run for a little bit and we'll just come back when that one has completed. So there, it looks like everybody's completed their pre-stage. So all the data is across. So now it's come around the time where we're going to kick off this full migration and get them onto 365 correctly. The first thing we're going to do is change the DNS. We're going to point the MX records away from Google across to Microsoft 365. So that's a pretty easy task to do. We're just going to add DNS management there and we'll take these entries and we'll replace them with the correct Office 365 ones. Now, the easiest way to find those is if you go into the center here, go into domains and have a look at those. Now we look at Selenium.com, look at our DNS records. It is going to complain because they are incorrect currently as far as Office 365 is concerned. So we can fix that up. We're going to grab this one. Thank you. Awesome. And we'll pop that in. We'll add that in as a record. MX record there, priority zero, and push that in. Add that. Now, what we do is we will now delete all of these Google entries. Like so. Those all good. Now we'll just mess with our text record. Now I think we can actually delete these. Sometimes these Google ones don't pop out particularly easily. So let's just delete that one. Because obviously that one there is linked to that one. It, it was a subdomain of it. 
So we should be able to do this. Sometimes we have to just edit them instead. Yeah, it's a Windows item. So we just edit that one there. Correct. Remain, see what we need to put in there. Yep, thank you. Good. DNS. Program replaced. Save that. Down to that's all okay. And auto discovery is still there. So that's good. So now we're pointing correctly at Office 365. If we go back in here, we can just do a quick check health. Now, I'm assuming things are going to happen very, very quickly. And normally DNS records do. If we do that a couple of times, chances are it's going to be uh, done like that. But there is a way to check how your DNS is propagating throughout the, the entire planet. So there's a website you can go to. Let me just put that in for you. It is dnschecker.org. And in here, yeah, you can put in anium.com and we can tell it we want to look up the MX record. And what it'll do is it will search a lot of DNS boxes all over the globe and just to see what it looks like. And you can see here that that entry has propagated out. Very useful tool just to see exactly how far your DNS has got. So we're good with that one. So now we've got our DNS cutover done. It means that mail is going to be going into those uh, mailboxes. So we can just we can just run a quick check on that one. We'll do a quick check on Russell and make sure that that is the case. Just quite quickly. With that nothing else to put in there. Send that off and let's look into his mailbox. Expecting to see very shortly. If, there we go. Email turned up. So the MX records are working. 365 is now live and it did not appear in here, which is good. Okay, so now let's go back into the operation with console and we're going to select everybody and we're going to kick off the full migration this time. And you can see it uses the same licenses. We're not using any extra ones. We can obviously we'll just use the standard ones it's got. We might say, you know, if, if we're not going to watch it, we could kick it off at a certain time tonight, but um, I'm everybody's live now. We can just hit the start migration and away we go. Now, I will go back to his mailbox just quickly for you, because what I want to show you is that we have currently no calendar entries and no contacts in there. If we keep that open and uh, um, yeah. I'm expecting to see some come across as part of this full migration that we're doing. So we can hit refresh. Obviously, still submitted. We wait for them to be queued and then processed, but that will happen very quickly. And we'll go back and look at Russell after that. So everybody's done. It's all completed. So let's have a look at Russell's mailbox now. So in the inbox, you can see there's the mail we sent earlier plus the additional couple that we we're expecting to get, which is good. I'll have a look at the calendar now. Yep, we've got our two meetings popped in there nicely and I'm expecting a contact record as well. Yep, there we go. So it has migrated everything over. We can look at the stats of the migration here as well and we'll be able to see exactly what it's done. So calendar entries there and you can see contacts as well, which is, which is good. So um, really, yes, we'll consider this one to be successful. The like you've seen, MX records are pointing, so they are now live and working on Microsoft 365 with all of their Google Mail in their mailboxes. So thanks for watching. And once again, please subscribe to the channel. Hope this was all very useful for you. And by all means, if you've got any questions or any comments, uh, just fire them over. Let's have a look and see what we can do to help out. But uh, thank you again.